dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Turhan Bay in the magnificent Rogue, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where your favorites from the cinema world gather to star in plays we know you'll enjoy. That international favorite, the very popular Turhan Bay, stars in a bright romance comedy titled The Magnificent Rogue. In just a moment, we'll have the curtain for Act One. But here now is Wendell Niles with a message of importance. Every American has a right to be proud these days, proud of the men who serve their country in the uniforms of the United States Army and the United States Air Force. Everyone knows the war record back of the armed forces. We are all duly proud of the victories won and the men who won them. But think a moment. The U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force always have been and are just as worthy of your pride during peacetime. Remember, the men who serve their country in uniform today are your greatest bulwark for security and peace. Now, once again, our producer. The curtain rises on Act One of The Magnificent Rogue, starring Turhan Bay as Jacques Courier. <laughs> It all happened somewhere in the vicinity of Avenue Montpellier, Paris, where dwelled in various stages of limited circumstances the struggling artists and musicians who made Paris their mecca. By day, they worked at odd jobs to pay the rent and to keep a loaf of bread and a bottle of wine in their cupboard. By night, they studied, or, weather permitting, strolled with a lover in the Tuileries Gardens. On the evening our story begins, the music of a violin is heard coming from the apartment of Jacques Courier, a handsome young new arrival at Montpellier. Across the street below, a door opens at the sound of the violin. A lovely blonde girl listens entranced. Then, obeying some uncontrollable impulse, she dashes madly towards the flat from which the music comes. Give me for breaking in on you. Not at all. I'm honored. Oh, it was magnificent. The music? Yes, your violin. What is your name? Jacques Courier. Jacques Courier. Oh, for you, Jacques, I predict a great future. Oh, the violin attracted you so. It magnetized me. I had to rush over. Oh, I'm not a forward girl. I have good upbringing. Of course, of course. But the gentleman at the piano. Oh, forgive me, uh, Piron, my accompanist. Bonsoir. Oh, charm, the charm indeed. Oh, what talent he possesses, Monsieur Piron. Ah, uh, yes, and uh, we see women too. Well, oh, you, you must not think that I rushed over. No, to... no, 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 of course not. To hear the violin only. Oh, what it does to me. Well, I'm interrupting things. I shall go home. You are a beautiful interruption. I know I shall go home. Uh, I'll see you to the door. Merci. Good night, Monsieur Perron. Good night, Mademoiselle. So, you're just a student? Just that. But you possess in your playing. Well, you have the control of a master already. <laughs> you are too complimentary. Oh, I know. I'm a student of the violin, too. Oh? Yes. Oh, tell me, when may I hear you play again? Oh, rather, when will you play for me? Oh, well, I... Tomorrow night. Promise me you'll play for me tomorrow night. All right. Splendid. Good night. Uh, wait, uh, I do not know your name. Oh, it is an ordinary name. Marie Carpentier. It is the name of an angel. Good night, Marie. Good night. Well, Piron, what did you think of her? Oh, she's gorgeous. Uh, isn't she the one? She is the one I've been mad to meet ever since we moved here three days ago. Well, um, what did she say when you told her the truth? When I told her what? That what she heard was only a phonograph record. Ah, oh, but I would not tell her that. To disappoint my beautiful Marie. Besides, I'm not so bad. Listen. 
Oh, stop, stop. You screech like a devilish piece of chalk on the blackboard. Oh, now be patient. I've picked up this instrument for the first time only ten minutes ago. I warn you, you had better tell her. No, no, you don't know romance, Piron. At this point, she's attracted to me for my violin. What violin? Now, when she says that she loves me and means it, then I will tell her all. Uh, why? You introduce me as your accompanist. I am a piano tuner and I dislike posing as something else. You are a marvelous accompanist, Piron. Until the young lady realizes my personal charm. Ah, what a beautiful fate. You tune the Noir's piano. The Noir cannot pay. You take his violin for bond. And the violin brings to me the woman I love. <laughs> Jacques, uh, the stranger was there again. Oh, the one with the mustache? Yes. He is most anxious to see you. Well, I'm not anxious to see him. If he comes tomorrow while you are here, tweak his mustache, put your foot to the seat of his pants and say, be off with you. Tell him I'm, I'm too busy these days, uh, uh, that I am in love, that I am winning a wife. Wait until she finds out what you do to gain your bread and wine. Uh, oh, she will understand. Not to mention what she will do when she finds out you are unable to even run a scale on the violin. I will manage by having a good supply of phonograph records. Yours will still be the fate of an imposter. Oh, what a lovely fate then, Piron. Commencing tomorrow. She happens to be a student of violin. I have consented for her to play for me tomorrow night. You have consented to let her play for you? Mordieu, this is the end. Oh, my Marie, I can hardly wait. <laughs> Come in, Marie. Come in, my lovely. Oh, thank you. Oh, maestro. Oh, please. No, I must call you maestro. Last night, you sounded like Eiffel's. This evening, I heard you. And you had the unearthly perfection of the Getty. Uh, it is unearthly, mademoiselle. Ask him sometime to make for you on the violin the sound of a squeaky door. <laughs> <laughs> a remarkable sense of humor. <laughs> Um, now, Piron, uh, were you not about to leave for some chestnuts? The vendor is on the street below now, waiting to serve only I you. I am leaving. I am leaving. No, poor man. Suffers from lack of imagination. <laughs> but now, Marie, you have your violin, I see. Yes. Oh, but I'm really so nervous playing for you. You see, I've only been studying violin ten years. Uh, well, my dear... At least you have a foundation. Yes. Well, you won't be critical then. How could I be critical of you? Oh, I'm in courage now. You may play for me. Well, what do you think? Remarkable. My tone? Your eyes. Oh, but my music. Oh, oh, that... Marie, my lovely one, yes. you have yes, yes. a considerable degree of talent. Oh, oh, I'm so pleased. Oh, you have no idea what that means coming from you. Oh, how can I thank you? Oh, why, you can take my arm and join me for a stroll if you would. I would. Well, I regret there is no moon out tonight, but I'm assured of one tomorrow night. Oh. And there is to be a carousel in the neighborhood. Would you not accompany me? Oh, I, I think I'd love to. You know, it's so encouraging being around you. It is. I'm glad. Yes. You see, Madame Francois Cartier discourages me with my violin. And who is Madame Francois Cartier? My advisor. She's helpful in guiding me. She says I should give up the violin, get married, and raise a family. Well, now, actually... Oh, but you have encouraged me to study. If it takes 50 years, what matter? Yes, what matter? By the way, what do you do to keep you in food and wine? Not that it means anything to me, knowing as I do that you're a genius flowering, but... Madame Cartier will be interested. Well, at the moment, I'm following the trade of an uh, interior decorator. Interior decorator? Oh, my, you're talented. Well, here's my door. Yes, unfortunately, it is. Good night, Jacques. Oh, one moment. Uh, I would like to know one thing. Yes? Do you ever think of me apart from my violin? Oh, can I? Oh. You see, Jacques... 
The violin is my second love. And your first love? Well, now, one does not tell a gentleman everything the first night. Oh, Marie, tell me, is there a chance for me? Who knows? <laughs> so little time has transpired. I will say this, however. Last night, I dreamed of the man I was to marry. We were in our own house, our castle. Oh, Marie. We sat before the fireplace. We would hold hands and talk and dream. And then... And then... Then we would play violin duets. Good night, Jacques. Ah, you're back. Oh, what a mad world, Piron. The woman I crave to be my wife must play violin duets. I said you were headed for trouble. I will find the answer. Uh, was there anyone here? A little man with a moustache. I did as instructed. Well, if the man has a bill, pay him. With what? Everything we have is spent for phonograph records. Then ignore him. But you, my fraudulent friend, what are you going to do in your dilemma? Very simple. Tomorrow I become a student of the violin. During my lunch hour, I find an instructor. <laughs> So, you want to learn to play the violin? Well, you have come to the right man, Professor Le Corn. I have guided the careers of such famous virtuosi as Apfel and Strudel, uh, not to mention Borscht. I am happy, sir, I've come to you. Uh, now, I quickly see you have many qualifications for study. You have a fine intellect. Thank you. You have the quick muscular response. Thank you. Uh, you also uh, have the pocketbook, no? Uh, oh, yes, yes, I can pay you. Uh, only a formality. Uh, you may pay the first ten lessons in advance. Ah, yes, Jacques Courrier. Under my tutelage, I predict for you a great future. I have not too great ambitions, Professor Le Corne. I wish merely to play second fiddle, to add a few notes here and there with a degree of authenticity. A few notes? Bosch! I will have you amazed at your technique in no time at all. Monsieur Le Corne, if you can accomplish this, you will have the undying gratitude of a man in love. Pause briefly from our story, The Magnificent Rogue, starring Turhan Bay, to bring you an important message from our government. Doctors of America, here is a problem that is of vital importance to you. A shortage of physicians, surgeons, and dentists is developing in the armed forces of our country. Doctors, dentists, and allied medical scientists are needed. You can help alleviate this shortage, help maintain the health of our men and women in uniform by serving a tour of active duty in the Army. The Army's extensive facilities for research and modern equipment will be at your disposal. You will have the benefit of techniques developed through years of practice and experimentation. When you put on the uniform as a medical officer in the U.S. Army, you'll be commissioned in a grade commensurate with your age and experience. In addition to your regular pay, you'll receive an additional $100 a month professional pay. Write today to the Surgeon General, U.S. Army, Washington 25, D.C., and request a tour of active duty. The curtain rises on act two of The Magnificent Rogue, starring Turhan Bay as Jacques Courier. Avenue Montpellier, Parisian rendezvous of budding artists and musicians, resounds to the music emanating from Jacques Courier's apartment as he continues to pose as a student of the violin until he wins the heart of lovely Marie Carpentier. Marie, whose second love is the violin, has not divulged her first love. Jack has high hopes as he stands before the mirror dressed to take her to the carousel. Piron looks on. Well, Piron, what do you say? Am I not beautiful? You have all the appearance of a peacock without inhibition. I am complimented. Any calls today? Moustache was here again. Oh, that pest. Well, I must be off to take my lovely Marie to the carousel. Has she discovered yet what an imposter you are? No. And from what Professor Le Corne says of my suitability for a violin, I dare say I will need not tell her at all. Good night, Piron. Good night. Here we are. A place reserved for us. Isn't that nice? Ah, yes. Well, did I not promise you a full moon? You did. And there it is. Yes. Oh, if I could only express to you how lovely you are by moonlight. Oh, Jacques. 
You, you do care for me a little? Yes, Jacques. A little or very much? Very much, Jacques. Oh, Marie, my angel. I have never asked this of any woman before. Yes, Jacques. I want you to marry me. Will you be my wife? I will be your wife. Kiss me. My wife to be. Oh. I must tell my advisor, Madame Cartier. Oh, Jacques, think of our future together. At this moment, I'm unable to think. Oh, when I think of our future, I hear only music, the music of a violin. Uh, you mean an occasional duet at home, together? Oh, hmm? no, I mean you and the concert stage and the world at your feet. But why are you so quiet? My dear, I was just thinking how our whole life's responsibility rests upon the shoulders of a certain Professor Le Corps. Now, once more, please. And remember the hand with the bow in it. You are not shining a window. Please, uh, let me have it again. No, no, no! Oh, dear. Well, Jacques? Um, yes, Professor? I am a man who has great regard for the Frank. Yes. However, and I must speak frankly, I cannot be tortured any further. Let me put it this way. Over in America, my cousin teaches the violin to a distinguished entertainer whose name is also Jacques. Jacques Benet. Oh, yes, I have heard of him. Uh, he's working in one of Dennis Day's radio programs. That is right. Now, my cousin has suffered great discouragement. After each lesson, he beats his head against the wall for 15 minutes. But compared to you, Jacques, my cousin is working with a prodigy. Good day, Professor Lacan. Oh, Jacques. Marie, what are you doing? Eh? I'm waiting for you, darling. I... I spoke to Madame Cartier. I told her about us. She's such a hard person to please. Well, how did she respond? I told her you were an interior decorator now while you studied. Oh, did that please her? Well, she's a difficult person, dislikes all musicians, measures everything by the franc. Well, if she dislikes musicians so, I would give up the violin. Oh, you no, know, never. But I have a plan. You will play for her. Oh, oh, no. Uh, no, you know how I'm about playing. Oh, please, when Madame Cartier would hear you, then she would know how famous you will be. No, 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 no. I'm not playing for anyone. Uh, furthermore, strange places distract me. But then she will come here. Oh, but I... Oh, you must, Jacques, for me, for us. Oh, kiss me, Jacques, and say you will. Oh. What evening, Jacques? I suppose... Uh, Friday? Why not? One day is as good as the next. Will you stop pacing up and down? I can't help it. What am I going to do? Well, you prepare this stew in which you now find yourself being boy. This is not the time to place responsibility for wrong. I must decide. Oh, say, perhaps if I delay the concert for a couple of weeks... Well... And then I start to play records that grow progressively worse. Maybe in a couple of weeks, I could reverse down to my present state of no talent whatsoever. No, that would never work. The records are only of the fine artists. Of course. Well, we will go through with it. Are you out of your mind? No, oh, no, it can be done. And here's how. We will conceal the speaker. The uh, playback speaker? Yes, and I know precisely the number I will play. The Nachtwind, the Nightwind. For this number, we can have the lights down very low. You are insane. No, 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 no. You are at the piano. The playback arm next to the bench, your signal will be, well, uh, vive la bagatelle. Yes, yes, vive la bagatelle. You put the playing arm down on the record. But if something should slip up... Things never slip up, Piron. Now, you will get for me that record, The Nachtwind, played by Swinton Jans, the Swedish violinist. Ha, ha, ha. We will entertain Madame Cartier. Yes, indeed. Well, come in, Marie. Hello, darling. This is Madame Cartier. How do you do, Madame Cartier? How do you do? 
My, this is a peanut shell you live in, isn't it? Well, the apartments are all small here in Montpellier, but the hearts are large. Isn't it wonderful, Madame Cartier? I don't know. This does seem rather a tiny place for an interior decorator. Oh, my, it's dark in here. Uh, it's the mood I'm getting for playing. I'm doing the Nachtwind. Uh, you know, young man, you look familiar to me. I do. Are you a carpenter? I seem to remember you walking into my house carrying a saw and fixing my door. Oh, no, no. Uh... Uh-huh. Your face is most familiar, though. Well, I, I guess we might as well commence the program. Uh, my violin, please. Thank you. Well, Piron, vive la bagatelle. Isn't he humble? He's saying vive la bagatelle. Hooray for trifles. He calls his playing a trifle. Uh, Piron, vive la bagatelle. Piron, what are you doing? What is this? I don't understand. Hey, Piron, turn it off. I'm trying to. Turn it off, do you hear me? I see now. A concealed speaker. Marie, this man is a fraud. Oh, he cannot be. Jacques, tell me it's not a fraud. Come in. Oh, dear. It is the man with the moustache. Jacques Cartier here? Uh, that is me. Your bill. Three months dues. Unpaid. 30 francs. Oh, well... Here you are, my good man. And now, uh, we are having a private party. Uh, just a minute. What are the dues for? Paris local. Plumber's union. Now I remember. You were a plumber. You came to my house. You carried the plunger to fix my... Ah! Oh, my Marie. She has fainted. Hmm. Well, it serves her right, consorting with trash. Good night, you. Oh, my poor Marie. What have I done to you? Piron! Forgive me, Jacques. Hand to me that phonograph record. Uh, there you are. Oh, what stupidity. I asked you to get Swinton Jans. What do you give me? Something that like that sounds like uh, Spike Jones. Oh, curse me. I am a fool. <sighs> well, get me a glass of water. No, I don't want to hear what my lovely Marie says when she wakes up. <laughs> There, now drink some more water. I'm full of water in the ocean already. Oh, how could you? First, you do not even play the violin. I could not tell you because of my love for you. And then you tell me you're an interior decorator. Well, I am. I decorate interiors with faucets. Oh, it's not funny. I hate myself for even associating with someone who has no talent whatsoever. No talent, you say? Is it not true? I will show you if it is true. Here. From the cupboard, some paper. Now the charcoal. Now I will draw your likeness. You, you're an artist? A magnificent artist. What do you think I do here in Montpellier? There. The contour of your face. The beautiful oval. Now your hair. Like the whisper of angels. Oh. Your eyes. The beauty of deep lakes. Oh. Your nose. The majesty of gods. Oh, sure. And your lips. So soft and lovely. There. Shock. Oh, it's brilliant. Is that a man with no talent whatsoever? You have the line of Matisse, the composition of Picasso. I can see it. You did draw this, didn't you? Of course. But you know art. Yes, Jacques. Art is my first love. Your first love? Oh, Jacques, I can see it now. Your drawings on exhibition, the world at your feet. But I thought I am your first love. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, but it is all right. So long as I'm always the first you adore. And how could you help but adore me? I am so magnificent. curtain falls in the final act of The Magnificent Rogue. Our star, Turhan Bay, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. The young men who have earned their wings in the United States Air Force have found a place in this air-minded world. Those wings and an Air Force future may be yours if you can fulfill a few simple requirements. They are, you must be between 20 and 26 and one half years of age, have had two years of college, or be able to pass an equivalent examination. And you must be physically fit. These are the requirements for training as an aviation cadet in the United States Air Force. When you have completed the course successfully, 
you'll have won your pilot's wings and a commission as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force Reserve. Outstanding members of each cadet pilot class receive regular commissions immediately upon graduation, while other men have the opportunity to qualify for regular commissions during their tour of active duty. Get your application at your nearest Air Force base or United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station now. Remember, only the best can be aviation cadets. Now once again at the microphone, our star, Turhan Bay, and our producer. Turhan, come out and take a bow for a grand performance. But don't bring your violin. Why, CP, that was a $20,000 Guarnerius. Didn't you like it? The violin, yes. The playing, no. Oh, but I'm inspired to become one day a great artist. Suppose you stick to a hobby in which you are great, photography. Oh, photography, yes. But I want an art in which I can make a great amount of money. You won't make it in playing the violin, believe me. <laughs> Have you ever considered motion pictures? Oh, but that's my business, C.P. And how's business? Very good. Columbia has just released my latest picture, Song of India. I've become a very modern Maharaja in a very modern India. No violin, of course. Then we'll all go and see it. And by the way, I understand you made some excellent photographs in India while you were there. And in Turkey and in Tibet. But my best pictures were made right here in Southern California during the big snow last January. We got some fine color shots at the ranch with the snow and the orange trees around the house. They'll make good Christmas cards, CP. That's what we wanted them for. We even made some pictures of the large snowflakes just to prove they're as big as silver dollars. Oh, well, that's California for you. Even the snowflakes had to be the biggest. <laughs> you know, it's a good thing we got the pictures when we did. We may never get another chance. I hope. <laughs> That's right. It will probably never snow again out here. Of course not. Well, Turhan, I want to thank you for joining us again. Thank you for the invitation. I enjoyed it. And now I think I'll run along and practice my violin. <laughs> but um, tell me first who's going to be with you next week. Next week, Turhan, and ladies and gentlemen, we present one of the greatest dramatic portrayals and stories of the season. Zachary Scott joins us to star in a historical play based upon the interesting life story of Henry Wilson and the establishment of the Congressional Medal of Honor. Here is a documentary play of interest to everyone. That sounds like a very good story. I'll be listening. Goodbye, CP. Goodbye, Turhan Bay. <laughs> be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when we bring you Zachary Scott in Above Their Comrades. Until then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> Turhan Bay appears with the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Rich Hall, with music under the direction of Eddie Scavana. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs> <laughs>